All right, welcome back to the Naval News segment. Today we're going to do Fleet Tracker. We're going to look where in the world is the U.S. Navy this week. We have the Iwo Jima and Harry S. Truman uh, off the East Coast doing something. I believe the Iwo Jima is still coming home from her uh, transit, from her deployment. Uh, she spent the last four or five, maybe six months over in the, the Indian Ocean. Red Sea areas like that, Persian Gulf. Uh, the S6 Amphibious Readiness Group is in the Persian Gulf. And the Ronald Reagan and Carl Vincent are doing something very special over in the Philippine Sea right now. And we're going to cover that. All right. So the total U.S. Navy battle force today has been reduced from last week from 296 ships to 294 ships. So what changed? Well, we did uh, decommission one of the LCS ships and we also decommissioned a uh, auxiliary ship essentially a deep sea tugboat if you will it does more than just that uh was also decommissioned so we lost two ships we're down to 294 now of the 294 total ships we have 100 at sea these include submarines and stuff that we don't talk about but what we do talk about and we'll talk about today are the 67 ships deployed in fleets what are they doing so look at this picture here isn't this a sight to see this is beautiful you have the two humongous uh, American aircraft carriers, the Carl Vinson and the uh, Ronald Reagan there, uh, riding alongside uh, the Queen Elizabeth, HMS Queen Elizabeth. And this is the Japanese uh, carrier here. And uh, they're all operating, doing war games exercises right now in the Philippine Sea and propose, uh, supposedly the uh, South China Sea as well. But this picture is from the Philippine Sea. Everyone told me it was going to be the South China Sea, but maybe for whatever reason, they're just going to stay where they are now. Uh, from the piece, it says Ronald Reagan Carrier Strike Group and Carl Vinson Carrier Strike Group with the Queen Elizabeth and the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force JSDDH-182 are in the Philippine Sea this week. Uh, the Reagan CSG departed Japan in May and spent most of three months operating in the Fifth Fleet that's over in the Indian Ocean supporting Afghanistan. So there they are. You got a... F-18 taking off with a lot of gas on board. He's in, he's in for a long day if he's bringing that many, that much fuel. This is aviation bosun's mate, third class Morrison from Miami, directing aircraft on a flight deck of the USS Ronald Reagan. How about that? Imagine growing up in Miami, going to high school, and you know joining the Navy out of high school and finding yourself in the Philippine Sea, part of the Pacific Ocean region directing aircraft like a year out of high school two years out of high school on the flight deck of united states aircraft carrier you can do that if that's something that appeals to you this is a career path open in the united states navy so definitely pursue it if you find this at all interesting um on board the uh, ronald reagan are the royal maces diamondbacks we've gone over these for the past five months so we're not going to read all of them but it's the same group of airmen uh, I presume that they're going to pull into Japan soon because they've been at sea for like five, six months. It's been crazy. Here's the USS Shiloh, also stationed out of Japan, pulling up alongside. This is one of our um, auxiliary uh, supply vessels. These things do everything from refuel at sea to, uh, you know, helicopter supply. Like you have a helicopter here, could pick up a, a pallet of goods and helicopter it over to the ship. Uh, from the description, it says guided missile destroyer USS Stockdale. Uh, and cruiser USS Shiloh are conducting a replenishment at sea from Military Sea Lift Command Dry Cargo Ammunition Ship USNS Washington Chambers, a TAKE-11 ship. And here you can see a little MH-60 from the Nighthawks uh, conducting some stuff as well. So now these um, Military Sea Lift Commands, they stay at sea nearly continuously. They they only pull into port to restock themselves, maybe do some repairs, and it's right back at it. Uh, the, the operational tempo of these crews is insane. They essentially live their life on board these ships. Uh, they, they have more sea time than anybody in the active duty Navy by far. So if that's appealing to you, you want to look up Military Sea Lift Command because they stay at sea a long period of time. And they have a lot of creature comforts. They've got, you know, the high speed Wi-Fi, you know, but you can't leave the ship. That ship is your home for months and months at a time, 11 out of 10, 12 months of the year, you're at sea on this thing. And those that one month in port isn't off. It's maintenance. It's doing things. Yeah. Very high tempo is my point. Uh, here we have an Osprey. This is one of those new Ospreys. Look at it. That's pretty awesome. 
you can tell they've done a lot of work on this design over the years. Uh, this one's assigned to the Titans Fleet Logistics Multi-Mission Squadron, or VRM-30. It idles on board the USS Nimitz class aircraft carrier Carl Vinson. Sorry, on board the Carl Vinson, which is a Nimitz class aircraft carrier. And so Carl Vinson has been at sea now for two months. They came out of San Diego. Uh, we've read all these names a few times, so again, we're not going to do it. We're just going to acknowledge the service of all these members that are out there in the F-18 and uh, E-2 squadrons with the uh, supply and helicopter squadron supporting them. Very cool. Here's a cruiser. Look at this, Ticonderoga class. Iconic Cold War, uh, absolute arsenal ship. This thing was the badass. This was the battleship uh, from, say, the Vietnam War onward. You know, this 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 is the new Navy battleship. And now today that battleship has become like uh, our SSGNs, the new Virginia Block 5s, uh, to some extent, the Arleigh Burke. Arleigh Burke has nearly as much capability as this Ticonderoga has. It's just not as big, so they can put more weapons on this thing than the Arleigh Burke has. But not by much, not by much. Uh, the Destroyer Squadron 1 is operating with, uh, who are they operating with? USS O'Kane, DDG-77, doing flight operations in the Arabian Sea here. That's a really cool picture. You can see a lot of the water wash, rotor wash, rather. Oh, my word. Look at this. I tweeted this picture out today. This is an amazing amount of firepower. I mean, not just the aircraft carriers with all their air wings on them, but look at the Arleigh Burks here. These things, and some of these may be the, the Japanese variant, the Congo class, but either way, each one of these is like its own little battleship with immense amounts of firepower. Ticonderoga's right there. The supply uh, support vessels right here uh, supporting everybody. These are probably, aside from the aircraft carriers, obviously, the most important ships in the fleet are these two right here, or three even, this uh, supply ship. And then around that, looks like they got some frigates back here that's so small it's hard to make out. But there is a ton of firepower in this photo. This might be the most firepower at sea at one time in one photo in a very long time. I, I'm kind of going through right now and I don't remember seeing this much working together in one photo ever, really. Because they have four aircraft carriers, four different nations just in the aircraft carriers alone. There's probably a few other nations in the back here uh, underway with us. Let's see what the description says. Of this picture, it says the US, UK, Jap and Japan ships sail together in the Philippine Sea. So literally just four nations of ships right here. This is what's going to defend uh, the Pacific from an aggressive expansionistic China right here is deployments like this. That's really impressive though. I can't stress that enough. Uh, from the piece, it says UK Royal Navy Carrier Strike Group HMS Queen Elizabeth is in the Western Pacific, having completed its maintenance and upkeep, and CSG departed from Guam on September 27th. So they've been at sea now for about a week and a half. Uh, the strike group operated with ships of the Royal New Zealand Navy, too. So there's a perhaps one of the ships here maybe from New Zealand, maybe not pictured. Who knows? Uh, the UK Carrier Strike Group includes a Type 23. HMS Richmond frigate. Someone asked me the other day, Monday, what is the best anti-submarine frigate in the world? And as far as frigates go, my vote is for the Type 23. This thing is extremely capable. Extremely. Uh, the Type 45 guided missile defenders, uh, Defender and HMS Diamond are at sea. Let's see, Destroy the Sullivans. Yeah, it's the same group that th these ships have been sailing around together now for, it seems like five or six months. And uh, they still have a long transit to go back home, the, uh, the Royal Navy ships. It's going to be seven, eight months if they left for home today before they would get back. Very long deployment. Here's a good picture. I like the depth of field on this one. Good trigger uh, discipline. Very good, sir. Two hands on the weapon. I like the side grip. I never got used to that. They never trained us Navy guys to do the side grip here. I imagine, uh, who's this? Is he? Oh, he's a Marine. So they probably, I guess they trained the Marines to do that. But in the Persian Gulf, reconnaissance uh, Marine assigned to all domain reconnaissance detachment, 11th Marine Expeditionary Unit, MEU, set security with an M4A1 carbine. I thought they had moved on to like the M4A3. I'm thinking of the M16A3. Okay. Yeah, the M4A1. Right, right. That's good. Okay. Uh, Essex uh, Amphibious Ready Group uh, with embarked 11th Marine Expeditionary Unit deployed on August 12th. That was before the Carl Vinson deployed by a couple weeks. Airg is comprised of three ships, the Essex, the Portland, and the Pearl Harbor. And there they have, you know, everything that they need, an amphibious transport dock, a landing ship dock, and what's the third one? 
transport amphibious standing okay so i guess just two different kinds but three three total ships this guy looks like he's getting into a harrier here lieutenant colonel gc heary ebay oh what, a, what an unfortunate last name to be called ebay uh feels bad man all right in uh the western atlantic we have a sailor here doing something oh not a sailor lance corporal i digress Lance Corporal Reggie Dinos, um, assigned to the 24th Military Expeditionary Unit, operates a navigation test set in the calibration laboratory on board the WASP-class amphibious assault ship USS Iwo Jima LHD-7. This is from October 1st. U.S. Navy photo. Very cool. So he's calibrating some uh, equipment there. Very good. Very good. Uh, Iowa Jim, the, Iowa, Jesus, the Iwo Jima Amphibious Ready Group ARG and the 24th Military Expeditionary Unit are now in the Western Atlantic and are close to arriving home. So they haven't been home yet. These poor Marines have been at sea for so long. Yeah. And they were part of the evacuation of Kabul, which went sideways. So, you know, my heart goes out to all those guys. It's a, there's a really good chance these Marines lost friends during this deployment. And uh, that breaks my heart, man. Uh, the 24th MEU, which is headquartered in the Marine Corps uh, Base Lejeune, North Carolina, consists of ground combat element, battalion landing team, and logistics combat support, and combat logistics battalion, and an aviation combat element. Everything you need to support, you know, an amphibious operation. And that's how they deploy. That's how they practice. Uh, really good. This is a great picture. He caught a wire here. That's So, is it, so this is 432. Is that how it works? Someone was correcting me on the on the wire numbers, telling me this one here is wire one, two, three, and four, right? I don't know. I don't know the wire numbers, but he caught one of them. This is a F-18E Super Hornet. The E is the uh, single seater. The F Super Hornet is the twin seater, for those of you wondering the difference. Uh, this is on board the USS Harry S. Truman, underway in the Virginia Capes, or Vey Capes is what we called it, operating areas. According to the Navy, Truman successfully completed its final phase of testing, uh, by the Board of Inspection and Survey, or INSERV, on September 24th. We talked about that. So they're ready to finally go on deployment. That's going to be great. Really good stuff. And that is Fleet Tracker for today. What do you guys think? A lot, a lot of operations going on. 100 ships at sea right now and submarines. You don't want to catch four or one? Yeah. Someone was saying that one of those... Whichever one is nearest the end, like the fantail, that's the CAG wire, where if you catch that wire, you got to go talk to the CAG, uh, Commander Air Group, to explain why you, you caught that wire. Because that's the one you catch right before you crash. <laughs> you know, it's like you just avoided crashing. F number four is the sternmost wire. Thank you. Yeah, I keep getting them mixed up. So I've just dedicated myself to not even saying the wire numbers anymore. Uh, Ranger Pig says, be sure that the carriers are staying in the Philippine Sea due to Chinese shenanigans. Uh, it could be that. I mean, there's no sense in artificially exacerbating the situation. You know, I kind of I would I would agree with that. Let's let's not always try to kick in the doors. Let's every once in a while calm down. Let things calm down a little bit over there. Lots of shenanigans in chat today while I was distracted. Yeah, I, I kind of kicked the uh, can in the first few minutes of the stream. And it, it rolled down the hill, and it was quite funny. Bees were everywhere. The moderators were running around swatting at them. And uh, I kind of enjoyed that. You know, I should not have enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> and now they're going to hate me for it. Uh, oh, yeah, here's that uh, ship that I was told you was, was decommissioned. It's essentially uh, a deep-sea tugboat. I don't know what else to call it. It's, a, it's the USNS Sioux which is a TATF-171, that's the whole number. So they decommissioned an LCS and they decommissioned this thing, which I'm sure it has a very important purpose, but, you know, that's that's why our total ship value went down from 296 to 294, is we also quietly decommissioned this one. 